What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion animation tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to animate movement inside of Lumion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is the Villa Van Manen model that got brought in in Lumion 10. So we're gonna use this one because it's already got some built-in models that are going to be helpful for what we wanna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do, just to take it easy on my graphics card, is to go up and turn off the background trees layer for right now. We can turn this back on later when we wanna create our actual animation. And so what we wanna do is I wanna create an animation where we fly into this house um, just kind of across the road like this. So just kind of a simple animation where we fly forward. And then we also wanna animate the movement of some context models. So like people walking, bicycles driving down the path, things like that. Those can really add some uh, life to your scenes as opposed to just like flying around a building or something like that. And so to start off, the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go into movie mode. So we're just gonna to go to the lower right hand corner, click on movie. And so when we do that, that's gonna take us into our movie editing mode. You can see how there's actually already clips in here of the people moving and everything else. So we're gonna create something kind of like this clip, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So we're not gonna make it too complicated or anything like that. So what we wanna do though, is we wanna start by creating a new clip. And so to do that, we're gonna click in one of these empty slots right here. We're gonna look for the option for record. And so when we click on record, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our camera movement. All right, and so what this does is this allows us to edit where our camera goes. And so this is basically just animating your camera movement. Don't worry about anything else in this window. And so what we wanna do is we wanna set a keyframe for where the camera starts and where the camera ends. And so in this situation, I'm gonna add a keyframe right here and notice how when you click on this, you can set how long these clips are, right? So this one, for example, got added with a length of 4.43 seconds. If I wanted a longer keyframe, I would just adjust this length, but then I'm going to move my camera in just like this, and then click on the add keyframe button right here. And so what this is gonna do is now if I was to click the play button, this is gonna animate the transition over 10 seconds of my camera moving from the previous location to this location. I don't wanna get too far into adding multiple keyframes in here. What I've found is it's probably best to do a bunch of short clips instead of trying to get your camera to kind of transition between a bunch of different camera views because it starts looking um, a little bit rough. So I would say try to keep your clips simple um, in order to avoid that whole camera jumping around um, thing that we've all seen inside of some rendered images. But now we've got this created. It's gonna be about a 10 second long video. I'm gonna click on the save clip button and we're gonna go back. And so notice how now when we go back and our trees are all turned off, we can turn those on in a second. But notice how right now, what we have is we have this pretty vanilla clip that's in here of our camera moving forward. And you can preview that by clicking the play button. And so one of the things we wanna do is we wanna add our visual style, right? So we've, we've got a number of different presets built in. If we just click on these styles, so we could click on like the realistic or something like that. And you can see how this will bring in those built-in styles. I don't wanna to get too far into styles in this video. If there's confusion, feel free to ask a question down below and we can talk about it later. Um, but we're just gonna use the realistic style for right now. And what I wanna do, and we'll turn our trees back on in a minute, is I also want to add some advanced movement to my scene or some movement just in general. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna do that by adding an effect. So what an effect is going to do is that's gonna allow us to add an animation movement. So you're gonna click on this little FX button right here. You're gonna scroll down to the options for animation. And so there are a few different options in here depending on what you're trying to do. We are going to focus specifically on the move and the advanced move. And so let's start with the move. So what we wanna do is over 10 seconds, we wanna add a movement animation to this model right here. So I'm gonna click on move, and you can see how this gives me the option to add move to my list of effects. And so we're just gonna click on this little pencil icon right here to edit this, and this is gonna allow us to go in and select something and set its movement. So in this situation, I can come in here and I can click on like this model, for example, right? Like she's gonna walk somewhere. 
right? So what we can do is this one is very simple. It allows us to set a start position and it allows us to set an end position. So there's no changing of direction or anything like that. And so we wanna start, we're gonna rotate her just a bit. So we're just gonna click on this rotate button and we're gonna click and rotate her so that she's walking down the sidewalk. And then we're also going to set this as her start movement point, right? So she's gonna start here. Now we wanna set her end position. So her in position is also going to be rotated to face down the sidewalk like this, but her movement is going to be a little ways down the sidewalk. So we're gonna say she walks four meters in 10 seconds. So she's not in a big hurry. So now if we click the checkbox, so notice how she's walking forward like this between those two points. And if she hits the end of that in 10 seconds, then she'll turn back around. So you could either adjust this to make her walk a little bit further. So let's say we wanted our end point to be a little further down the road. We could just move that like this and click on the checkbox. So now she'll just walk a little bit further down the road in our animation. So now let's take a look at a more advanced animation because she can just walk in a straight line, right? But if we were to scroll back, let's say we wanted the guy on the bike to move down the road. Well, the problem with the guy on the bike right now is he has to turn and then move forward. Well, you can't do that with the simple move tool. So you have to add an advanced move effect. So we can click in here, add an advanced move, and then click on him. And so what we wanna do is we wanna click on him. And so now that we've selected him, what we can do is we can set where he's going to be and where he's going to be facing in the timeline. So you can see how as I click and drag along this timeline, I can set like almost like keyframes for people. So I wanna say in about one second, he's gonna have moved to this point right here. And so what this is doing is this is setting a movement keyframe for this object. And so we're gonna go ahead and at this point, again at one second, we're gonna set this to rotate his heading by selecting the rotate heading and moving it to the left like this. So we're gonna point him down the road at this point. So now if I look at this, and I actually forgot to set a base point. So we're gonna start by moving him back at a time of zero. So at a time of zero, we want him to have a base location right here. We want him to have a base heading right here. So now I have a keyframe for where he starts and a keyframe for his first movement, right? So you can see how in a second he moves to this point. Then at one second, we want to add another keyframe that maybe takes him another, we'll call it three seconds to move down the road right here and you need to kind of pay attention to this as you go otherwise these people can kind of take off like superheroes like they just kind of like zoom off so you need to be a little bit careful with this um i should probably pay a little bit more attention to the way that he's rotating so that rotation may not that rotation may not need to start at this keyframe so i may adjust this keyframe so that he's maybe a little more rotated this way so that it doesn't look like he's power sliding around the corner. But then you can see how over the course of this, he's gonna move down your sidewalk. Well, the other thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and let's just pick a point at the very end. So we're just going to select the very end and add a keyframe where he's a little bit further down the road. And you can kind of adjust this as you go. Just kind of play this to make sure that it looks all right. Like, I don't want him to look like he's in a super big hurry, but I also don't want him um, to be going super fast down this road. So you can use this to animate him moving down the road right here. And so now, if I was to go back and play my animation, I've got my simple movement happening right here, and I've got my advanced movement happening right here. So you can see him kind of riding down the road. So we may need to add one or two more movements. We might want to have like a car coming down the road or something like that. But in general, this is how you're going to animate your movements inside of Lumion. Um, but you could go through and animate other elements as well. 
So like for example, inside of your move, you could also, and so just real quick, we'll add these people walking down the road as well. So what we wanna do is they already have a start position, right? That's right here. So we wanna set their end position. So we're just gonna set them so that at the end of this, they'll have walked maybe like three meters down the road. So kind of like they're strolling right here. So for her, I wanna make sure that she has the right orientation but you can see how now they have a start and end position that'll be animated over the course of the video. And so now if I play this, he's riding his bike down the road, they're moving forward, and then she's walking down the road right here. So now you have this movement that kind of makes your scene come alive inside of your rendering. And so once we're done with that, we're, we can go back in and we can turn our trees back on. So we can come back in here and turn our trees on. And then let's go ahead and render our image. So notice how these show up because I turned them back on inside of my build mode. So now my camera moves forward through the bushes towards the house over the course of 10 seconds and you've got people walking around. And so what we wanna do is we wanna render this clip. So the way that we're gonna render this clip is don't come down here and click this button because it's gonna render every single one of these clips, which is not what you want. What we wanna do instead is click on this button right here for render clip. And what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to render this with our effects. And then we can set both the uh, production quality as well as the number of frames per second. Um, I'm gonna leave my output quality at production and I'm gonna leave my frames per second at 25 just so this will render faster. Just note that the more frames you render, the longer this will take. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on the button for HD. We'll name this and we'll hit enter. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna go through and it's gonna render out every one of your frames. And so, um, I did place this in here with the plants in the front. I'm gonna let that go because I'm interested to see how that turns out. Um, if you did want to adjust this, you can just go back and adjust the camera location keyframe. And so if we play our created animation, um, notice how you've got the movement of the bicycle over here. You've got the people walking. One thing to note is he does turn around over here in the video. Um, so you can see him kind of flip around. So make sure you're paying attention to those details before you start doing a super high quality render um, that takes hours and hours. So you can see how we get this really great result and the people walking around really adds to the realism of this. Note that I did do this on fairly low settings just for the sake of speed for this video. One thing I would recommend um, um, is if you look inside of Lumion, we're gonna click on OK, is rendering this out in short clips, right? So having short clips, like little 10 second clips or something like that. If you set this up with a big, long, uninterrupted sequence of movement instead of little short clips, then you're gonna have huge rendering times if you ever have to go back and make changes. So I would recommend doing like little five or 10 second clips and then having your camera jump somewhere else. Um, just so if something goes wrong with one of those, you only have a 10 second clip to re-render instead of like a five minute long video that takes your computer three days and then you realize something is wrong with it. So that's where I'm going to end this video. In the future, there may be more kinds of Lumion animations I want to create, but I'd love to hear from you guys on what you'd like to see. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.